For my grandson. Are you sure that's what's over? Yep. Слава Україні! Слава нації! Україна! 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 Героям України тричі! Thank you very much, my friends, for coming here today to another one of our lovely Ukrainian rallies where we tell the world what's going on in the war in Ukraine and we tell the world about the crimes of the Russian terrorist regime and how we are going to stop it together. But before we go any further, we are going to start this rally, as we always do, with the Ukrainian anthem. Yesterday. I watched it myself, to be honest. I call it an absolute act of torture for anybody who watches that interview with Tucker Carlson and Vladimir Putin. However, I think it's also very important that people know what actually happened there. So today, if any of you, my friends, is willing to know what actually happened in that particular infamous interview, it's already infamous, it just came up yesterday and it's already infamous. And you don't want to torture yourself by watching the whole thing because it's two hour plus. It's not short at all. So come here and listen to what we are going to tell you about this particular interview, my friends. There's a lot to speak about. Personally, I almost wrote a little book about the whole interview. And we're going to begin without any further ado. So, as usual, Putin starts this interview with a little bit of revisionist history. And it just, just gets worse and worse. He starts by saying that the history of Russia began in the year 800, or around the year 800, with the Ruriki dynasty. First big mistake. It's amazing. He just started speaking and he's already making things up as he goes. It was the history of the Kievan Rus that started in the year 800. There was no such thing as Russia back then. Because as we know, the Tsardom of Moscovy, that only started much, much later into the future, later on rebranded itself as Russia, which is modern-day Russia. But of course, this rebranding was never mentioned by Putin. This change of names was never even mentioned. He never spoke about this because he knows that this is one of the many weaknesses of the Russian propaganda machine and one of the things that they cannot speak about because they are wrong about this whole issue. After that, 
he started going on about the same topic that Ukraine didn't exist. Now keep this one in mind, because throughout this interview, Putin gives at least three different origin stories for Ukraine, which obviously contradict each other. But of course, in Putin's head, I'm sure, that's not a contradiction at all. It only adds to the credibility to give many different stories. Just like the Joker in The Dark Knight. You know, he gives different backstories for himself depending on the person he's speaking to. It's quite funny, really. After this, Putin starts saying that Ukraine joined Russia during Khmelnytsky. Now, this is true. However, obviously, Putin distorts this truth and he speaks about it as if it were something completely different. He speaks about this union between the Zaporizhian Cossacks, the Zaporizhian siege, and Moscovy in those days as something that would be a promise forever. Almost like a marriage proposal, the dead do us part, or something like that. However, the irony must not be lost on the people who hear Putin say this. Putin to claim that an agreement of the past that was made hundreds of years ago in the past has credibility nowadays. My friends, times have changed. We know this, Putin should know this. And he does know this. But he doesn't care about telling you about this. Because he knows that he's lying. We know that he's lying. He knows that we know that he's lying. And yet he continues to lie either way. This is the danger of the Russian terrorist regime, my friends. And this is what we are here to expose. Russia is a terrorist state. 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 Stop Russia, stop the war. 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 Help Ukraine protect peace. 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 Now obviously Putin did not go in depth about the Kingdom of Galicia Volhynia, one of the many predecessors of modern day Ukraine. In fact, it could be called the link between the Zaporizhian siege and the Kievan Rus. That was that link, the Kingdom of Galicia and Volhynia. And at the same time, the so-called Russians in the north were paying tribute to the Mongols and begging them to never invade them and getting influenced by the Mongol Khanate and their absolutely despicable way of treating their subjects. And that is what Russia is nowadays as a result, my friends. It's not the modern day democracy. It can't even exactly be called a dictatorship. It's a Khanate with their great Khan sitting in the Kremlin and sometimes hiding in the bunkers when he feels like uh, life is a little bit too dangerous for him to go on his usual stuff. After this, now keep in mind, this was the first origin story that Putin gave for Ukraine because he already admitted that the Zaporizhian siege was not the same entity as the Moscovites. He admitted it himself. He did not say those were Ukrainians, no. Because Putin speaks in a devious way. Even when he tells the truth, he tries to present it in a way that suits his own agenda. And this is why he never called the Zaporizhians Ukrainians. A little bit after that, he said that Stalin made Ukraine. Now, if you're feeling deja vu, it's because Putin has said exactly the same thing before in one of his hour-long James Bond villain speeches where Putin was claiming that supposedly Ukraine was made by Stalin and before that nothing existed. Now this is a lie as we already can see because Putin himself has admitted that the Zaporizhian siege with Bogdan Khmelnytsky have signed a treaty with the Moscovites. And another thing that Putin has obviously omitted because it doesn't suit his agenda, is that Khmelnytsky himself showed endless remorse over this decision later on when he saw what the Moscovites were doing in Ukraine. Putin speaks a lot of times about the misgivings of the relation between Ukraine and the Rich Pospoleta. 
the Polish Commonwealth of those days. However, Putin never speaks about the misgivings of the Moscovites who were mistreating the Ukrainians in an even worse way those days. Because of course, he needs to continue this facade that supposedly the Ukrainians are at the same time a mere inferior people to the Russians, but also Russians themselves, who have simply forgotten the way they are. This is the facade, this is the lie that Putin needs to continue pushing, no matter what. And we are here to expose it, my friends. So, let's continue with that. He said, at the 14-minute mark, and this is my personal favorite part of the whole little interview, at the 14-minute mark, he claimed, his words, not mine, that Poland had provoked Nazi Germany to attack them. This is what Putin was saying in this world-famous or infamous, in this case, interview with Tucker Carlson, that Poland was the one who was to blame for Germany when they invaded Danzig in World War II. Now, how does he justify this idiocy? How does Putin justify these genocidal tendencies and this romanticism of Nazism? He says that the Polish were evil because they divided Czechoslovakia in the past. Well, my friends, the Soviet Union and Imperial Russia have divided countries also. And of course, there's been wars among different countries. But very few countries in that area or in any area in the world ever came even close to the genocidal tendencies of the Russian terrorist regime and the Soviet Union. This is something that Putin, as a fanboy of the Soviet Union, will never admit. And this is something we are here to tell everyone, because everyone needs to know this. At the 14-minute mark comes the most glaring issue with Putin's whole speech, with this whole interview. It's this perpetual shilling for expansionism, this perpetual shilling for genocide. Putin needs to shill for Nazi Germany, he needs to shill for the Soviet Union, and at the same time, he needs to call the Ukrainians Nazis. As self-contradictory as that might sound, Putin needs to do this, because Putin functions as a Hitler. Putin makes his country work as a neo-Nazi state, or quasi-neo-Nazi state, or as the Soviet Union, which once again, he shills for all the time. But let's continue about our review of this interview with Tucker Carlson, because truly, this is too good, just too good. At the 38 minute mark, he said that Russia is best with hypersonic strike systems. He said that the hypersonic strike systems of the Russians are the best in the world. Now this is a funny remark to make, because Russia has not made a lot of use of hypersonic strike systems. And that's exactly why Putin can still get away with saying that they're the best in the world. Because they have not been tested openly. We cannot see the results in the mass. Putin kept saying, and overall the Russian regime kept saying that their tanks were the best, that their planes were the best, that their everything was the best. But then their tanks failed, and their planes failed, and everything else failed. Everything started failing. And this is something we need to talk about. Because Putin will continue to claim that his stuff is the best, even as it continues to fail. And after that, he has repeated this fallacy that supposedly the Western powers have promised not an inch to the East. Now, this is an absolutely ridiculous argument. And it's truly painful to still see people using this idiocy nowadays. This has been debunked countless times in the past, and we have to debunk it today once more. There was no treaty, no agreement that would bind the West to never expand NATO or the EU to the East. Never. Not even once. All of this is pure fallacy. A lie. A big fat lie that continues to be spread by the Russian terrorist regime. And people need to know better so that they do not fall for these cheap tactics. Because this one is an easy to debunk lie. Putin said that Russia tried to join NATO, but they were refused. Once again, to an extent, there's some truth to this. There were indeed conversations about Russia joining NATO. But how could NATO allow Russia in 
with all of their corruption, with all of our, their genocidal tendencies, and their volatile borders even. Because as you might remember, my friends, when Putin first came to power, Putin started destroying Chechnya. He raised Grozny to the ground. So the Russian borders in those days were uncertain. Many people thought Chechnya would separate. Putin did not allow that. He preferred to destroy the people who wanted freedom rather than to give that freedom to them, as is his way. And any questions, why is it that Russia was not allowed into NATO? Well, because you refuse to allow any kind of change. NATO is a union of many countries in the free world. If these countries allow others from the authoritarian world to join, they will do nothing but destabilize them from within. Obviously, this is the reason why the negotiations about Russia joining NATO failed. It's because Russia did not want to give any concessions themselves. They did not want to negotiate. They wanted to have everything and give away nothing, as they keep wanting now. At the 41 minute mark, Putin mentioned guarantees from the US. Was Russia never keeps their promises. Now this is very interesting. Russia gave Ukraine guarantees when the Budapest Memorandum was signed in 1994. Russia gave Ukraine guarantees when the two Minsk agreements were signed. Russia gave Ukraine guarantees when the Ukraine-Russia Friendship Treaty was signed. Oh, thank you, Michael. Sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, it is starting to rain a little bit more now. So perhaps we might, uh, if you want an, uh, an umbrella, my friends, we have some umbrellas over there. If, for, for all the people who don't have umbrellas, like this one, this fine gentleman here, uh, borrowed it to me. Thank you very much for that. But either way, we will continue, my friends, because rain will not stop our rally. This message needs to be sent where it's raining or whether it's sunny. And it does not matter what the weather is, we will continue to spread this message because this message is the message of the Ukrainian people and the message of a better future for all of humanity. World, wake up! World, wake up! World, wake up!